Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I, last night I went and watched one of my son's high school baseball games. He had a, uh, he had a uh, hard ball down the left field line against a guy throwing 92 miles an hour. The only problem was the guy only threw straight to my son who got a chance to, to swing on it. It was an MLB scout in the stands and um, I guess, I don't know if they're watching that picture or somebody else, but uh, this guy, it doesn't matter how fast you throw, if you can't throw straight, because after my son hit a ball, this guy, I guess he walked at least three or four guys and we scored a lot of runs. We ended up losing the game, but we got back in it because it doesn't matter how hard you throw if you can't throw straight, folks. That's the story of pitching seen a lot of kids that can bring the heat but they just can't throw straight for any period of time all right the market did a pullback today but it's uh looks like it's starting to come back a little bit xrp got down as much as i guess 58 cents or so uh now it's bumped back up to 59 it looks like it's recovering right now folks we're leading up to the having i'll show you that in a minute um you you were bound to you're gonna have some manipulation leading up to this thing i i'm if i'm putting my money on it you're about to see this thing blast off big time bitcoin and all of it total markets at 2.48 trillion right now so it's just in 143 million was liquidated from crypto in the past 60 minutes this was um last night so this must have really gotten going last night <clears throat> i'm if I'm, I'm I'm telling you that I've seen this movie but they're showing here how the patterns looked uh, following the same kind of patterns at about the same time um, in 2024 versus 2020 <coughs> in the Bitcoin thing then you've got this the Bitcoin having is in 17 days now look I think that charts with regard to Bitcoin because of the history of it and, and because of that particular market. I think they apply to Bitcoin more than anything. And having lit one thing that I, that one thing I know for sure in this space is when you have these bull runs, the market, the money hits Bitcoin first and then it goes on down to the altcoins because everybody has the same kind of thought pattern, which is why, well, if all these people got wealthy in Bitcoin, what about these others? They actually have use cases and stuff. What about these other? That's how it works every time. Now, I've also been watching a lot of these people on the Bitcoin having, and the pattern has been that every time the Bitcoin's going up, but it goes up even more after the having occurs. So we've got, I guess this is 17, April 18th is the Bitcoin having. So you got. Seven, 16 or 17 days left. I don't know why this is going to 16, I guess, anyway. We'll go with 17 days left. All right, now this was going around yesterday and I, did, I, I, I sat back and I waited to see if this was a joke. I wasn't sure if this was correct. So just sent, just sent money from Uphold to my bank using XRP. The transaction took place almost immediately, but to my surprise, look who settled the transaction before if, uh, before, if pictures are worth a thousand words, then you know what this means. FedNow credit, FedNow deposit from Uphold Inc. Pretty interesting stuff. Just got notification this morning. Um, yesterday, I played a, vi a clip where uh, Thinking Crypto, Tony Edward, had, had interviewed Congressman Wiley Nickel, who is a Democrat. And um, Wiley Nickel, turns out, just found this out. Guess where he's coming? XRP Las Vegas, which is in 30 days. So we got a Bitcoin having in 17 and an XRP Las Vegas in 30 days. And if you go down, there he is. While we've got one congressman and we've got two people, John Deaton and Greg Kidd, that are running for Senate. 
and we've got an ex-CFTC chair. This conference is the adults in the room. I've been talking to Brad Combs, and this con conference will set a record for last year. It will surpass last year's uh, attendance. I believe it will by far. I think people are going to be pretty shocked at what they see. Then Brad Combs' wife, who is Mrs. Backup, she, she put this out tomorrow, tomorrow being today. Today's the last day to receive the discount on the MGM Grand Rooms. Uh, apparently they got discounted rooms because they're doing the conference at the MGM Grand. If you want to get those discounted rooms, go to XRPLasVegas.com and here's the discount room link right here. Also, this fundraiser, I was told that this thing is starting to fill up too and that's the a satellite event chamber of digital commerce if you look at this um there's i want to ma make sure the same people are coming yes brad garlinghouse john deaton michael errington christopher g and carlo eleanor terrett all of these people will be in a close-knit circle i mean th this will be like i think it's like no more than 200 people that will be there and everybody will be sitting there eating dinner it's a uh, benefit dinner that's going to be interesting, but the thing, um, the things fit. The, the, well, first of all, you're sold out of VIP tickets. General admission is on that track, and so pretty soon you're not going to be able to get anything. And so, last year they sold out, and I talked to Brad Combs about this. Last year he was turning people away at like in the last five days, and. He, he doesn't want to be put in that position again, so he's probably going to do something to get the rest of them gone so that he, do, he does not sit in there in the last five days like that. Anyway, all right, wanted to show you this. This is, um, this is the guy who is about to make a big announcement to run against John Deaton. His name's Ian Kane. Hey. He's a city council guy in, um, in Boston. Who, who has not aligned himself with any party, but he's, all he's done is donated to Democrats uh, in recent years. But he hasn't declared, almost like it's a strategic plant guy. Up guys, uh, so I did something today, and uh, we're gonna be getting things in order to make an announcement in a couple of weeks. So follow me here, stay tuned for more news, and I'll look forward to talking to you soon. Have this is him with, with Joe Biden, who, if you had his sane mind, uh, would be in charge of Operation Choke Point 2.0. But if he, since he's not in his sane mind, and since Elizabeth Warren cut a deal during the election cycle that she would get out of the election if Biden would let her be in charge of everything financial that goes through the White House, that's why she's the one that's actually in charge of Operation Choke Point 2.0, and Gary is her little toady. And now this guy, who seems pretty buddy buddy with her, um, is right there, and um, we'll show you something else. This is from Brian Costello. American voters, especially those in Massachusetts, must rig rigorously question the integrity of Senator Warren. Senator Warren and her Senate banking colleagues have let SEC conceal financial wrongdoings by the Chinese executives in U.S. capital markets. She doesn't care if you're stolen from. Warren only cares about her power. Now the very individuals in question are receiving investments from Massachusetts. This is the Pension Reserve Investment Management Board to fund companies competing against Massachusetts-based employers. Now meet brand new GOP newcomer Ian Kane and Senator Warren's unexpectedly, unexpectedly favored Republican candidate versus formidable opponent John Deaton. With a background in the Democrat Party and previous endorsements of Mara Healey and Joe Kennedy, Kane is now positioning himself against Senator Warren, who, whom he seems to have admired. His swift gathering of significant campaign funds ranging, ranging between $300,000 and $500,000 to collect over 10,000 signatures in just 30 days prompts speculation. Is this rapid support genuine or is somebody in Warren's camp helping him? These events call for a thorough review of the leadership representing Americans in Washington. Do you really think Warren is focused on your interests? Here's Ian Kane right here when he got to meet Elizabeth Warren. You think John Deaton would say this? 
Ian Kane says, yesterday I had the pleasure to meet with Senator Elizabeth Warren and a dynamic group of millennial elected officials from around Massachusetts. Many issues were brought up which are shared by our local cities and towns, but it's great to know that each person in that room shared the optimism and commitment needed to find and devise solutions for us all. So he's big buddies with Elizabeth Warren, and now we're to believe that he's gonna fight for crypto? Please. He's a politician, folks, and he's position. this is someone positioning themselves to do the same thing Elizabeth Warren did, and that is, hey, I'll step out, look, I'll step out of the presidential race if I can be the one that, that makes all the financial decisions in the White House, Joe Biden. I believe this guy's positioning himself to do the same thing. Oh, hey, Elizabeth, if he wins the Republican thing, if he, if he was able to beat Deaton somehow, this is the guy that, on some side agreement, either steps out of the race and decides not to run or sees, you know, whatever. There's no, there's no telling what kind of shady backroom conversations have been going on. But something's been going on because he announced nine days after John Deaton did. And until then, she had not had anybody to run against for the last whatever. This one caught my attention. This was like, whoa. I'm going to predict, this is Truth Labs, I'm going to predict the future. News will come out in 2024 stating Novogratz and Voorhees are FBI informants when really they are blockchain bandits with cover. Folks, you can't trust anything at this point. All of our institutions have sold us out, so it's hard to know what to believe anymore, and I think that's by design. Check this video out. This is uh, the guy from... Uh, Medico. This reconcentration of assets under custody in banking. We believe, uh, and I think it's, gonna, it's materializing right now, that um, this wide distribution that we have seen historically of digital assets being allocated across thousands and thousands of companies and millions of individuals uh, will end up being statistically a lot allocated with a few large banking institutions. Oopsie. Um, then we got Stuart Alderati came in yesterday and he says uh, last week's Coinbase decision has four different confusing definitions of what constitutes a crypto ecosystem. It, 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 if this sounds like legal gibberish, it's according to the SEC. Whenever you acquire a token, you are always investing in an amorphous ecosystem regardless of why, how, or where you acquired it. Once Judge Torres in the Ripple case, Ivy League educated with Bronx Street sense, looked at the full evidentiary record she understood the sec had strayed away from howie where a promoter made promises directly to investors about a clearly defined enterprise all right then we had this now they're telling you uh how that you know laura shin and all her friends here they're all upset about the prospect of the, the sec going after ethereum and they're talking about how crazy it is well, they're not going after the Ethereum Foundation or consensus because that would open up discovery. Then everybody would be busted for all the corruption, and that's the fact, Jack. So listen to this. Utterly ridiculous at this point for the SEC to bring a case alleging ETH is secure. I don't think they're going to sue the ETH Foundation. I don't think this is going to be an ETH case. That's because there, there's too much corruption. Bill Hinman, Jake Clayton, all the stuff. There's too much, and Gary Gensler's probably somewhere in that wood pile too. This is an evidence gathering mission to prepare for litigation over the ETH spot ETF. This is what Early they're. This is what they're wanting to do. Is they're wanting to create this quasi. It's got to. It's anything the SEC does has to be done where they don't sue Ethereum Foundation or consensus. Or, or fool with anything that happened at the ICO, that stage, because that's where all the corruption comes from. That's where that all leads to. And it implicates the SEC was involved, the CFTC, they were involved in the Ethereum free pass, all of that stuff. They can't go there. That's why they're doing this, to make it look like they're doing something against Ethereum when they're really not. That's what this is about. All right. We're going to go in DAIXRP.com, and here's what we're going to talk about. I showed you when X was censoring a video the other day. 
And now I'm about to show you another video we just found out in the last 24 hours. This is a big deal too. I'm going to show you another video that they have now censored. Now we're supposed to believe Elon Musk, he's the good guys. But this is the second instance and this isn't an accident. This is a very specific video having to do with ETHgate that has been censored. And they're, they're intentionally not showing you this, which tells you everything you need to do. And I'm also going to show you how I went and made sure that I had the, the, uh, the full video downloaded so that they can't erase it. So I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe. Hit the like button. Tell your friends and family. Here we go.